Welcome back to another video. My name is Stephen Foster, and today we are gonna talk about the iPhone 14 Pro camera system. Yesterday was the announcement. I'm recording this the day afterwards because there's a few things I wanted to talk about. Is that new iPhone 14 Pro camera system awesome, legit, totally cool? Yes, like there's so much good stuff about that. But I wanted to take a different approach in this video. You see, when phones became thousand dollar phones, at least the top end, the flagships, uh, back with like the iPhone 10 and that sort of generation of phone, shortly after is when we started calling phones Pro, like the iPhone 11 Pro or 12 Pro, Pro Max. And I think there's something to be said about wanting more for a Pro name, not just in marketing terms, but something that you can actually do professional work with. Now, I'm not saying that you can't do professional work with any of the iPhones. Like I said in my previous video, I have friends who are shooting client content on phones, making a living, which is, that's awesome. But I think there's a feature divide that can still be overcome uh, reasonably, respectfully, that's not being met in the current pro phone offering today. So I wanted to make this video to talk about five things I would like to see on any pro phone, any phone that is going to bear the pro name, uh, what I would like to see as a professional photographer, someone who has been doing photography professionally now for a while, what I want in a pro phone. Maybe you want the same, leave a comment down below. And hey, if you're not subscribed, I would really appreciate it if you would. First up, let's talk about that ultra wide camera, which got a little bit of love in the most recent update with the iPhone 14 Pro. But the thing that I don't like about it, or two things that I don't really like about it as a pro photographer, is that 13 is not a focal length that I like shooting at. A lot of my landscapes and stuff that I've done in the past with like my big camera, my Canon EOS R5 that I shoot these videos on, I like shooting at 20 on my 15 to 35. Um, you'll find at least, I think anyone here who's done any type of professional photography will find that like shooting wider than 20, at least in my experience, uh, there's a lot of distortion and a lot of issues begin to start happening like in video with Ibis wobble if anyone uh, remembers that on the R5. I think it's, I don't know, the most recent update I haven't noticed it, but I would really like a normal, what I would call a normal focal length. Now this is maybe more subjective from my perspective, but I think 20 gets you enough of the way there. But what I would really like to see or have available on that ultra wide is something like an ND filter, like a built-in hardware ND filter, because most of the time that I'm using that ultra wide, I'm shooting outdoors in bright daylight sunlight, and I more than often not want some type of neutral density filter there, just so I can get more color, more saturation, uh, be able to drop down my sky a little bit and just have like a, a normal looking landscape shot. Now I know that there's a lot of software and things that the iPhone can do with multiple exposures to sort of compensate for that, but I would really like it in hardware. And I think if you're gonna call a phone pro, a camera system pro, even if it is on a phone, I think that's something at least to consider. Moving right along to the telephoto lens, which did not get an update with the iPhone 14 Pro. There were some rumors that the optical formula may change, meaning it could have gone to maybe like a 4X, which would have been really nice because that would have put it right at that 100 millimeter mode. But we didn't get any updates to that on the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max. But that's really what I want to see is I would really like to have a telephoto lens that has at the bare minimum 100 millimeter full frame equivalent focal length. I think that's the right amount of punched in and giving you that focal compression to, to sort of have some personality, I think. Like the 77, I know I saw like Tyler Stallman's video. If you're not following him, I'll link his channel down below. I feel like anyone who's following my channel probably knows who Tyler Stallman is, but I'll, I'll link his video down below talking about the iPhone 14 Pro camera system. And he, he made this comment that makes a lot of sense is now with the new standard camera, you have sort of this like 24 to 70 between uh, the, the standard camera and the telephoto camera. And that's that's okay, I think. But, but my sort of Trinity carry for my big camera is like a 15 to 35, something in that range. I use that at 20 a lot if I'm not shooting at 35. A 50 millimeter that is like has a very fast aperture and then I carry my 70 to 200 and that's because I usually use it somewhere between 100 and 200 and that's the kind of shots that I like to do so it'd be really nice if I had a phone that could shoot somewhere between 100 and, and 200 I feel like 200 is maybe getting a little greedy right now but hey who knows 
And the final thing I'll say about that telephoto lens is I would love for that lens to be the macro lens. I know a lot of people who enjoy wide macro photography, but I personally, again, this is subjective, but also if you look at sort of like the macro photo, pro macro photo lineups that someone like Canon offers, those 100 millimeter macros are like the top of the line, like people's favorite macro lenses to use. I use a 100 millimeter Canon macro. I made a video using an FD Canon 100 millimeter macro that I'll link down below as well. I really enjoy shooting that compressed focal length in macro mode. I think that's a really cool pro feature that pros like to use. And I'd like to see it on my phone. Finally, in the hardware category, we have to talk about that standard camera. The the lens that used to be like a 26, 27-ish, I think, millimeter focal length or full frame equivalent focal length. What's now on the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max is this 24 millimeter focal length with a 48 megapixel sensor behind it. That's pretty cool. That's, I think that's two wins actually. I know we're talking about all the things that are missing, but I really do appreciate that there's a normal focal length or what I would consider a normal focal length because 26, 27 always felt kind of weird and just felt like this, like the phone focal length. And, and you can kind of like almost feel it when you see a photo taken on a phone at those sort of weird focal lengths. The 24 feels very normal. Um, and some of the photos that were in the keynote uh, just looked like they could have been shot on, on a professional camera. And, and that's, I think what they're going for. And those photos have kind of already looked like that, but even more so this, the personality that comes with that focal length is great, is awesome. There are still two things that I think are missing here. Uh, one that I think is more subjective in my terms, but one that I think is very important for any pro photographer, again, calling a camera phone a pro system. I would really love to see this lens, the standard lens or the normal wide, I think is as it's referred to. I would like to see that at 35 millimeters. 35 millimeters is an iconic full frame focal length equivalent to be at. I think 24 is probably just better served as like a dedicated 20 down at the ultra wide because I think there's two different types of people who are shooting on their phones. There are the people who are shooting for like posterity or just to like capture information and share that with someone. And I think for them having like a 20 mil ultra wide that can capture whatever they need to capture is fine. But then with that 35 millimeter focal length, I think putting that on the pros says, hey, this is actually a pro camera. That That's, I think, one of the most desirable focal lengths, focal ranges that you would have on a pro camera um, is to have a 35 millimeter, in my opinion, personally. That's what I would really like to see and use. And I love shooting on 35 millimeter primes, even with the 15 to 35 F2.8 on my Canon. I really enjoy taking photos like that, lifestyle shots, um, portrait shots. I like 35 millimeters. And I think a lot of professional photographers do. So I think that's a, a miss. I think that's still a miss, something I would like to see on a pro camera. The other side of that, that I think everyone could agree on is having a faster aperture on that standard camera. I do think now it's cited as a 1.78. Um, I don't know why they just didn't say F1.8. Uh, still, I don't think that's fast enough for a pro system. I really would like to see F1.4 at the bare minimum to call this a like pro prime lens. Cause we are, we're, we're in thousand dollar phone territory. Who knows if those are going to get any cheaper. I don't think they're going to get any cheaper anytime soon. It's probably only going to get more expensive from here. If that's the case. Let's ask for a faster aperture. I think that would be huge being able to create some real bokeh, some real background blur, because I think one of the things things with like portrait mode and some of these other technologies that are being done in software. They're just, they feel dishonest, at least for me. I don't want to be like the like art artist hipster person. But one of the things I really like about shooting in a very fast aperture is fall off, being able to get multiple sort of pieces in your scene that have this sort of like fall off effect where sort of like uh, portrait mode just still is just like, let's just blur the background, like just, just blur it out. And like, it, it doesn't have the same, yeah, it doesn't have the same character. So uh, I, 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 if you're gonna make a pro camera system, this, this is my wish list. This is what I would like to see in the hardware, faster aperture, 35 millimeter standard lens. Uh, you can keep that 48 megapixel sensor there. I think that's gonna be great. I'm very excited to try that out. So let's get down to the two software points that I wanted to talk about. The first software piece that I think is missing or that I would like to see on a pro phone camera system. Again, this is sort of talking about the iPhone 14 Pro, but also just pro phone cameras in general. I I think that's goes without saying. Cuz we've seen this already on some Android phones with like 
a Leica or Hasselblad collaboration. I think that's more for the hardware sense, but I would love to see uh, the iPhone have something like Canon Color Science applied to it or have a mode where I can go shoot uh, with a certain type of like, I guess, preset or color science that it, that that sensor and that hardware is tuned to deliver to give me some character to the image that doesn't just feel like a phone. I think I think that'd be kind of cool. I think it'd be really cool to have a pro grade color science, not just like a preset filter, but like really tune that hardware and software. You know, kind of like what the iPhone is known for. Uh, I, I think that would be cool. And and I'm a Canon shooter, so it'd be really awesome to just be able to like have my phone already have Canon Color Science on it and being able to match the two, I, I think that'd be nice. And the iPhone's already kind of doing this with audio where like they they have some integration with Dolby audio for like the speakers and how sound is produced on the device. So like it has some, it, it sounds a lot better if you go back and listen to like audio on the iPhone from years ago versus like audio on the iPhone today, it sounds way better and that's just not better speakers, but also the sort of partnership with Dolby. So something like that for the camera system and for like the color science personality character of that phone, I think that would be pretty awesome. Finally, and then this is a, a big one. This is a, this is a one more thing, if you will. I really would love it if the iPhone, if iOS, if you will, uh, got Aperture. If you guys remember, if anyone who's been a photographer for a while uh, remember Aperture, it was a program that was on the Mac that was sort of like Lightroom and uh, allowed you to like catalog photos and edit your photos. It'd be really nice to have a pro photography app and catalog on your pro camera system, pro phone, pro iPhone, whatever, iPhone Pro 14, maybe on the iPhone somewhere in the future. That would be, I think, huge. I think it'd be great if Adobe had some competition in that space. So those are my five things. Those are the five things that I would love to see come to a pro phone, a pro iPhone, maybe in the future. If any of those five points resonated for you or were something like, yeah, I, I really want that, leave it down in the comments below. Or if you feel like I've missed something and there's something that you wanna see on a pro phone camera system, Drop it down in the comments below. Would love to hear it. Uh, one of my favorite things is hearing from all of you guys and uh, just talking about cameras and photography and all that other fun, cool stuff. With that, I just wanna say thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed to this channel. I am just so honored by all of you. And if you haven't done it yet, uh, I invite you to. We talk a lot about tech, photography, and other fun stuff on this channel. Please be kind, both in life and in the comments below, and like this video to send good vibes across the internet. With that, We'll do it again soon, real soon. We gotta unbox that iPhone and do some work. I think the new Google Pixel 7 Pro is supposed to come soon. Bunch of other cool stuff that's hit the studio here in just the last few weeks since my son was born. That was been, that's been like a huge, crazy trip. <laughs> Being a father and trying to also make videos at home. Mom's got the kid upstairs. Or I think they may have gone on a walk to give me some, some quiet time to record. Got so much cool stuff to put out on this channel. So stoked you all are here. We'll do it again soon. Later.